Hi, this is Eric Martin. We're Board Game Geek. I'm here with designer Shadi Torby. Hi, Eric. Part-time designer, I guess you should say. And uh, we got the new edition of Onirum, which Z-Man Games has released at Spiel 2014, which now has bonus expansions over the initial edition. It's got this uh, fancy look here, which now I can't do. I will help you. To sort of highlight the, the mysterious presence inside the box that we have here. Uh, I was wondering if you could give an overview of the game and then maybe we can talk about uh, the, the expansions and the other, the notion of the series okay. of the Oniverse. So. so what are we doing? This is, first of all, it's primarily a solitaire game, although you can play two players as well. Exactly, a two player, it's either a solitary game or a two player cooperative game. Yes. Uh, what's the nature of the game? What are we trying to do? What, what world are we inhabiting here? Actually, you are lost in a dreamlike labyrinth and you have to find the eight doors of this labyrinth. If you find the eight doors, you win. Okay. Those doors are represented by cards and those are those cards. You have four different colors and in each color you have two cards. Mm -hmm. So if you manage to put all eight cards on the table, you win the game. There are two ways to put a door card on the table. It's either playing three cards, three room cards of the same color, one after the other. So if, for instance, I play those three rooms, I would be able to search into the deck for a red door and put it on the table. Okay. So this is the first, uh, the first way to, to get a door. The other way would be to discard what's called a key card uh, from the same uh, color. So if I draw, if I have this key card, this green card in my hand and I draw the green door, the second green door that is hidden somewhere, I would be able to discard the green key card to get the door on the table. So those are basically the two ways of getting those cards. And how do you play? You always have five cards in your hand and when it's your turn, either you discard a card and draw the next card of the deck, and that was it, or you play a card in your labyrinth row, exploring the labyrinth. The only rule that you have to, um, to follow is you can never play two cards with the same symbol one after the others. And uh, in the basic game you have three symbols, sun, moon and key. So this would be a legal play and it would get you a door. This would not be legal because I would put a sun after a sun. So that's basically it. What makes it a little bit more complicated is that you have bad cards, the nightmare that are hidden in the deck. And if you draw one of these cards, you would have to basically discard a card, either your whole hand, or if you have a key in your hand, you can discard a key, or you will deck the first five cards of your deck, reveal them and discard them, unless you have nightmares and doors, which, which are not, shuffled which get shuffled, shuffled back here. You win if you manage, as I said, to put the eight door cards on the table. You lose if you run out of cards in your deck. So okay. that's basically, basically you have also an extra power when you discard a key card because as I said, on your turn you can either play or discard. If you discard a sun or if you would discard a moon, nothing happens, you just draw the next card. If you discard a key card, you would reveal the first five cards of the deck. You have to discard one, in this case it would be very good because it's a nightmare. And then you would put the remaining four in the order of your choice on top of the deck. So this would be the other power of the key card, which, as I said, you can discard it when you draw a door card. Otherwise, if you do not have it, you simply shuffle the door back. If you have a key, you can discard a key, get a door. This is the first power. Second power, to destroy a nightmare when you draw it. Third power, to, this, to do this prophecy, you know, and reveal cards when you discard a key card. You can, of course, also play a key card in your labyrinth in order to get three cards of the same color, one after the one after the other, to get a door. So this is for the basic basic game. 
basic game. Now the initial game came out from Z-Man. It had uh, it was the, just the tiny box it had three expansions, and now this new one has seven expansions in there. Yes, seven and the uh, the little meeple, which is also sort of an expansion yes. in itself. So, how did the expansions come out about initially? Now the the, the basic idea, it still works. It phenomenally well for a solitaire game. You have a challenge, you have choices to make on what to play when and when to discard rather than to start something that you might not finish or, you know, that sort of challenge. Uh, and then you add in the other ones and they add in additional challenges and just special powers. The, uh, the, the glyphs in particular, I was playing with the glyphs on the plane on the way over here. And I could immediately see, I don't know if you want to bring those over and mention. So if you add the glyph expansion, you add another set of four doors. Exactly, which makes 12. You have to get the 12 doors to win in order to win the game. Yes, and you have a glyph in each color. The colors you can play in the sequence. Absolutely, so it gives you a fourth symbol to play in your labyrinth, which makes the game easier. But they can be used another way. Exactly, you can discard them and it works a little bit like a twisted prophecy. As I said, prophecy, you would discard a key, reveal the first five, discard a card, hopefully a bad card, and then um, put the other one on top. This works a little bit differently. You would reveal cards from the top of a deck, and if you are lucky enough to reveal one or several doors, you would immediately get one of those doors. So it's a third way to get a door on the table. After adding more doors to the deck yeah, to make it tougher yeah. to do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I, I played just once with the glyphs, but I could immediately see as I was doing things, I was doing them terribly wrong in that I was making it harder for myself, but I'd only realize after I do it. Um, or as if you use a prophecy and you see something coming up, but then I complete a sequence, which I have to go get a door, which then I'm gonna have to shuffle the deck. Mm -hmm. So you lose the knowledge that you had gained for doing this. Which I should have thought of, but it was a red eye flight, so I'll use that for my excuse. <laughs> um, what are some of the other expansions that are out here? Well, how does it twist it up, and how did they come about? What was the origin of the expansions? Some of the expansions are actually ideas I had for the basic game, and that I um, then put aside because I wanted to go for a, a basic game as pure as possible. And, um, and other I, uh, ideas that came along the way. Um, for, for instance, this one, the Dreamcatcher expansion. Um, as I said, uh, I mean, I maybe not, uh, didn't say it extremely precisely, but there is, uh, there is a discard pile, that's obvious, you know, when you discard the cards, you have your deck. And there is another um, area, that's the Limbo pile. And in the Limbo pile, you put all the cards that you will have to shuffle back into the deck at the end of the turn. So, and um, somehow the Dreamcatcher expansion came out as a way not to shuffle the Limbo back into the deck anymore. I thought, okay, what would happen if an expansion kept the Limbo prisoner during the game? And so I came up with this expansion, which are the Dreamcatcher. You start the game with those four Dreamcatcher cards, cards revealed on the table. Additionally, you will have those four Lost Dreams cards that you will shuffle into the deck. They have the same back, the Dreamcatcher do not. So it's obvious you will not have to shuffle them. The Lost Dreams bring you uh, an additional victory condition that you will have to fulfill along with the doors. It's not either, it's both. You have to have both. And this victory condition is to save those Lost Dreams by having them next to one or several Dreamcatcher cards at the end of the game. Those are very easy. When you draw them, they go into the limbo pile, and the limbo pile at the end of the turn goes automatically into the dream catcher. So you would say, I will win automatically, except that you can use each dream catcher only once, and when it's full, it's full until you free it again. So let's say I draw during a basic game a door and I do not have the key in my hand, or I have it and I, for one reason or another I don't want to discard it. So I will put it into Limbo. End of turn, instead of shuffling it back, I will put it next to a Dreamcatcher. 
But let's say the Dreamcatcher already has this card here, so it has to go there. It cannot go here. If in a next turn I draw a Nightmare card and I decide to reveal the first five cards of the deck, five cards, I reveal those five. Those go to the discard pile, those would go to Limbo. It means that those three cards would come here. So far, so good. Problem is, if other car, if another card or other cards come here, then it's full. And either I manage, for instance, to find a green door, which allow me to take this from the dream catcher and add it to the victory, you know, stack. In a way, I found the door, which means I have a free dream catcher. Otherwise, if all dream catchers are full and I have to fill them again, one is destroyed and removed from the game and all the cards that were next to the dream, all dream catchers are shuffled back. Which means if you lose all the dream catchers, you will lose the game because you won't have any possibility of rescuing those guys anymore. So you really have to manage now. I mean, it's an expansion that reduces the shuffling, but it's not, it not only reduces the shuffling, it adds a new element you have to manage. So this was the point of, of this expansion. Similar to, I know, the, uh, the one with the spells, you're now using the discarded cards in order to cast spells such as looking at the bottom of the deck, you draw one forward or avoid the nightmares. And it's again just it uses some element of the game in a yeah. different way. Yeah, Whereas exactly. before the discarded was nothing mm. except just to show you what you can't get yeah. anymore. Yeah, yeah. Now, this is the first title that was released for the Oniverse as I believe it's called. Um, Urbion came out a couple of years ago, um, second title. Now there's, uh, Z-Man has talked about Sylveon and Castellian. I believe there are six titles total in the series, all in the Oniverse series, all with um, Elise Pal uh, Plessis, yeah. I believe, uh, providing the arts. Exactly. So how did you come about? I, I believe you mentioned in an interview you had just seen her art previously and saved her contact information. What was it that attracted you to the art and why did you save it? It was just, you work with artists in different, different, uh, I don't know. I, I suppose it, one, it was one of those inspirations, you know. I, I was looking at the time for somebody to do um, a prototype, some arts uh, for, for a prototype about opera, a game about opera I had developed in those years. And so I visited several um, expositions and um, one of, of those was a final year uh, class exposition from the greatest uh, for fine arts in Brussels and so was it Elise's work was there and I, I really loved it she had made a little book for the children books uh, which was very very cute and um, I just kept the information I don't know why I thought if ever I do a, a kid a kids game I will I will ask her and then when I had the, the pro, working prototype for an Irim, I thought okay I don't want to go for the traditional heroic fantasy that we have everywhere Let's do something different. And I thought, okay, and why not this girl? I mean, I, I thought about her for children games, but actually it could be much more interesting to have her do, doing an adult game with this style that she had. And so I wrote her and I said, okay, I don't know you, you don't know me, but I saw you work. Would you like to work on a game? And, and it's worked so, out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it definitely provides a unique perspective. It, it's, it kind of stands apart from everything else, which is kind of the nature of the game as well, where it's a solitaire game, but it, it feels very different from other solitaire games. I don't know. It, it sort of it, it inhabits its own world, in a sense, which is the graphics certainly help in terms of that. Just the nature of exploring the dreams, coming, the nightmares. Uh, as you say, it's away from the medieval fantasy. So, as its own look. What about uh, future games in this series? Are, uh, no one has, Z-Man has not announced release plans for anything, so we don't, we don't have to ask about that, but 
Oh no, no. it's it's, it's um, planned that Sylvion, okay. who you can see the cover here, uh, will come out um, next year, I think uh, the, the first quarter of 2015. Okay. Right. And then uh, then after that you will have uh, Castellion, so those are the two next games of the of the series. Um, Sylvion, uh, if you want to you want to know some stuff about it? Okay. Sylvion is um, a mix of draft deck building and uh, tower defense. You are the guardian of the forest of the universe and this forest is under attack. There's this, uh, 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 in French I call it Ravage, uh, I don't know how, how we are going to translate it, in, but you know this kind of entity, evil entity wants to burn the forest down and it will send waves of attackers and nasty spells towards the forest that you will have to defend using a deck of cards and this deck of cards in the basic version of the game uh, it is a pre-constructed deck where you use you know animals to defend the forest you plant trees you know to give uh, vitality back to the forest and in the advanced game that is also included in the box you will have to draft from a much bigger pool of cards in order to, and you will have to decide during this drafting phase which strategy you want to use, okay. according on which card you will have to, you will manage to draft during the, this drafting phase. So, in building this deck of defenders that you will then use in the second part of the game, which is the battle against those elementals. So, this is the and I know Castilian as well. The short description was tile laying, exactly, but. Beyond that, so Tiling Castellian. Basically, the, the idea is that you will have to face another a monstrous entity. You saw it also here depicted. And the, the problem with this entity is that it it's a shape shifting entity. So it will you will have to organize different type of defenses, which means you will have to build different castles according to what type of monster you will have to face. And, um, and you build this castle by laying those tiles that represent defenders and, uh, and uh, by discarding also in the advanced version of the game, discarding those defenders, there are four different types of tiles, of defender tiles, you will trigger power that will allow you to reorganize your castle so that's so. If I have to describe it in two words, I would say it's maybe a um, ever-changing jigsaw puzzle. So it's not jigsaw by okay, all the pieces. I mean, all the pieces obviously are tiles fit next to one another, but you have to respect construction rules, and you can build different castle each time according to which monster you will have to face. Okay. And then will Urbion be re uh, remade in this sort of? series with additional expansions and I like really really hope so I as I say, I, I'm a little bit. I'm feeling a little bit like a showrunner on television. I have uh, I, I have created a, a television series, and I know how many narrative arcs I want to develop. And now I've been commissioned, you know, a first season, you know, with this. And and yeah, of course, I hope there will be, you know, okay. another one. So um, yeah, and, and Urbion would definitely be part of this next season. You mentioned, I should mention as well. You you brought up opera earlier, and your primary profession is opera singer. Yes. Correct. So you're not a um, a designer by trade or anything like this. What was the original inspiration or spur that made you come up with something? Usually, I try to um, convince, convert my colleagues to play games with me, and most of the time it really works. I mean, I, I already introduced lots of you know easier games to singers and musicians, and it, it, it's really very fun. It's a great way to meet also the colleagues, you know, in another perspective. But it's not a, it's not always possible, and especially I mean maybe not so often when you're in a production rehearsing a lot. And so I um, used to play to try to find a lot of solitaire games to play by myself when I was uh, you know on production because lots of production are also I'm living I'm living in Brussels and most of my production are outside of Brussels so I don't have my usual uh, group game game group gaming uh, uh, friends and um, and I was a little bit frustrated um, I, I wanted to to have more good modern solitaire games. I tried a lot to play a lot of patience, you know, the traditional patience, and I thought they weren't really um, 
how can I say, up to date with what we are used to as gamers. We are used to take more decisions, we are used to have more elements to manage and most of the traditional patients is just either, oh yeah, it works, oh it works here, it doesn't, that's it, most of the times. And it, it wasn't enough for me, so I thought, okay, it would be really cool if we had a series of games, of solitaire games that would, um, you know, uh, be up to the modern standards, what you are waiting in a game. Decisions, you know, uh, dilemmas, uh, management, I mean, all that we are used to have in, in modern games. Well, patience doesn't have a narrative or any sort of exactly thing to, to hook on to. Thank you very much for the overview. I am excited to see this back again. It's it's interesting. I played a number of times and that you can mix them as well. You can uh, already imagine the possibilities for more deck manipulation and just more things going on. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to explore yes. in terms of that. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And I, I hope to see season two. Well, once we get through season one first. There's a lot to explore still. Yes, there is. Thank you. Thank you.